You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it is Friday. It is 1 p.m. Central. It is 2 p.m. Eastern. Yup, it's time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from this fine network upon which you're listening to this program right now. If you're new to the network or to the show, first off, welcome. Secondly, if you like what you hear, Keep those reviews coming on your platform of choice. doesn't matter where you get the show. It could be your Apple Podcasts, your Google Podcasts, your Stitchers, your Spotify's, your YouTubes, our website, wherever you get it. Make sure you leave a review so other folks can continue to discover and enjoy this content, particularly in these, shall we say, troubled times we're all living through together. It's more important than ever. And, of course, keep those questions coming. We do love to hear from you guys as well. If you like it in your ear holes live, you can join us every Friday, 1 p.m. Central via the Mixler link. It's the same link for all of our live shows. If you have it for the other ones, you can join us live for this one as well. We'd love to see you guys. And then you get bumped to the top of the list if you have a fun question coming in via the live chat. Let's see who else we're going to be chatting with today live. First off, he is known far and wide as the father of Valentino. Yes, he is the greasiest of meatballs. Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Soon to be, I suppose, is it an Austonian? Is that what they call themselves, Mr. Meatball? I, I You know, I don't know what they call themselves. Uh, I'm not one yet. I'll find out when I get down there. It'll be part, part of the, the joy of exploring a new town is figuring out what to call yourself. Yeah, what, the, what do I call myself now? <laughs> Austonian? Austinite? Neither one really sounds right. I don't know. I'll have to An I'll have Austinian? To Austinian, perhaps that might be. My brother lived there for a couple of years. I think I would know. And yeah, yet, maybe uh, ask him. Let's, yet, let's find out will, what uh, baby baby Longo, uh, baby <laughs> brother Longo, has to say about uh, Aust- the Austinians. There we go. He's on the older end of the spectrum. He's not the baby brother, but other than that, he might uh, he might be willing to comply and indulge us. And then also joining us, uh, it's been a while since we had him on the old Ball Views program, but he's holding down the Myax hot seat today. You might know him from his regular appearances. With his other co-host there, Mr. Wyatt, of course, I'm talking about Mr. Brian Overby, the senior options analyst, a.k.a. the options guy over there at Ally Invest, a.k.a. your go-to host with the most for Options Playbook Radio. Mr. Overby, welcome back to a show that isn't your show on the network today, sir. 
Well, it's great to be on a show that isn't my show, especially talking about volatility, one of my favorite topics. So I'm excited to dive into uh, all these questions that we have regarding what is going on with the markets and talk about a crazy day today, huh? Uh, almost every single, I'd say about half the market reported earnings that as far as companies are concerned that you want to talk about. So uh, <laughs> Thanks for the invite, and I really appreciate it. All right, then. Without further ado, the table is set. It's time to eat. It's time for the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Vol Review, the portion of the show where we review the volatility that has been lighting up your tapes and continues to light up our tapes this week. Could be on the VIX side, the spike side, the options, the futures, the ETPs, all that good stuff, the trades, the trends, the developments, the unusual activity. We throw it all into the tasty, delicious stew that is the volatility review. And I've said it before. I'll, I'll say it again this week. I have a feeling I'll be saying it again for many weeks to come. Another weird end to another crazy week. Out here, you know, uh, it kicked off here with the looming specter of all the big tech giants kind of getting grilled on the street. They added flavor, of course, with the earnings, of course, we'll get to that in a little bit. But the Congress bringing all the big tech for to trying to bring them to heal a little bit. I'm not sure how well it worked in a remote setting out there, but grilling them. So there's a lot of consternation. Maybe this would lead to some sort of negative, uh, negative results for them, of course. Fast forward a day or so, not even from the hearings, and pretty much all of them blew the doors off their earnings to just ridiculous degrees. Apple, of course, announcing, I think it was a four for one stock split out there, just what they term amazingly strong sales for the iPhone. So that's all lifted in certain segments of the market. And of course, we had horrific economic numbers, our worst Q2 pretty much ever going back to the days of the Great Depression out there. GDP just annihilated in Q2. And again, it kind of depends where you look on the economic spectrum, where people think, we're, or when people think we're going to recover from that. Some economists thinking it's going to come in Q3 and Q4 with massive stimulus. Others saying, yeah, not till 2021, or probably more likely 2022, or even 2023, till we have some GDP back to some semblance of normalcy. So that weighed on the markets in the middle of the week. And then, of course, coming into today, now we have more earnings, kind of adding more stew to this volatility cocktail all this leading up to yet another super mixed market kind of depends where you're looking what you're seeing out there uh, with uh, the dow taking the lion's share to the dark side out there today on the heels of some losses in their neck of the woods in particular earnings in chevron and caterpillar not looking too good so i guess you can kind of deem them the old world economy dragging down the dow dow's off over three quarters of a cent about 0.85 percent uh, coming into the show here. S&P, the Goldilocks, only off about six-tenths of a percent. Again, those big names like Apple and others uh, were giving lift to the quote-unquote new economy, a.k.a. the tech-heavy NASDAQ. That was in the green. It just ticked to the red. Actually, it's kind of unched right now, but it's leaning towards red. So maybe even all that explosion of good earnings out of the big fang names out there isn't enough to keep NASDAQ in the green for the day. We shall see. As the day now, it's kind of hovering right around unched again. So we'll see. Now it's taking back up. So we'll see. Maybe Nasdaq can fight this urge to the dark side. But it does seem like the global specter, of course, of the pandemic and some, shall we say, not so great results on that front. On top of the global just economic slowdown that's as, that's happening as a result, seems to be overshadowing all of this gold getting a lift off this news, of course, up to 1988, threatening. We're talking about. 2,000 strike calls dominating the tape yesterday on Twifo. Those are even closer than when we were talking about them yesterday out there. And crude still above the 40 handle, 40.4 or so. So despite the options flow we talked about yesterday saying people are still fading at above 40, it remains stubbornly north of 40, about 40 and 40, 40, actually, about $40 and 40 cents. Coming to showtime, our old friend spikes 25 and three quarters. That puts it down about a point and a quarter from last show. We've got uh, VIX Cash right around 25 and a half. That puts it down almost one and a half handles, about 1.4 handles from last week. And our old friend VVIX, a.k.a. the volatility of volatility, also down a bit. You know, it had been stubbornly persistent around that 120 level, a level that we use quite often on the show as a barometer for, hey, things are getting spicy out there. You got to pay attention. 
It's a little bit shy of that today. It's about 114 and a half or so. Puts it down about five, a little over five, about five and a quarter handles from last show. So that's a lot to parse, a lot to analyze, a lot to take in. Uh, let's start with our guest holding down the Mayax hot seat. Brian, a lot of volatility has been popping off this week. What's caught your eye and the eye of the folks at Ally this week, sir? Well, one of the most interesting things, obviously, was what happened on Washington and the fact that Facebook came out and was supposed to announce earnings on Wednesday and at the last minute decided to change it to Thursday, what, which basically made this Friday a quadruple witching event, if you will, if we could term it that, where we had Google, Facebook, Apple, and uh, Amazon all announcing and all these weekly option contracts had one day to live. So a lot of volatility overall in the marketplace and it was created a lot. I, I, I can't recall a time when this many big name companies that are really leading the, co- the market all announced on the same day and it happened to be a Thursday before a Friday expiration date. So that I think was the craziest event that that it, that I saw going on. Not to mention the fact that they were all on the on the tube uh, on the TV talking about uh, how they are not uh, how they should not be considered monopolies overall in their marketplace or in their place and their advertising and everything to go along with it. So uh, surprised to see uh, almost all the stocks. I think Google is the only one that uh, got beat up a little bit after their earnings report. And uh, the NASDAQ was actually kind of struggling to try to stay flat today, even though we had a lot of those big players uh, pushing it higher. So I guess it, that's what I was watching the most. Uh, surprised to see volatility actually a little bit low at this point in time. Uh, when I look at the VIX index, seeing that just hanging right around that 25 level, it's just kind of stubbornly hanging there, and it just won't go much lower. But I guess that would sum it up for uh, a very exciting day on uh, in the markets today. And just overall, obviously, Ally, you guys are over there on the brokerage side. How big of a driver is earnings season, in particular, an earnings explosion, like you said last night, where pretty much all the names, or just about uh, every name people like to trade, all reported in one fell swoop. How big of a driver is this for volume and for your options clients over there at Allied, Brian? Well, I haven't seen the numbers today, but I do expect, I I mean, I'd be willing to bet that this will be one of our biggest trading days uh, for the month, for sure. Um, And these are the stocks that everybody trades as far as, especially when it comes to option trading. Um, and And when you get an event like this, where you have these extremely expensive underlyings and those option contracts those out of the money those at the money option contracts they, they have the, the the premium has to come out so you get a lot of people that are speculating uh on the one day option contract so i expect to see record numbers but i haven't seen them quite yet mr meatball same question for you sir what is lighting up your tape on this historic i mean every week's been historic so far in 2020 for various often dubious reasons but this week's historic just for the explosion of earnings coming on the heels of capitol hill testimony coming right in the face of options expiration so a lot to parse what's catching your eye and lighting up your tape this week mr meatball yeah i think what was so unique about all those companies reporting is that they've gotten so big at the same time um you know this time last year the same four companies reporting represent what, you know, 20, 20, a little over 20% of the NDX. Yesterday, they were about 35% of the NDX, maybe a little more. Um, and a huge portion of the S&P 500. So yeah, you know, the movement in Apple, the movement in Amazon, the move, movement in Facebook are doing a good job to counteract what is across the board kind of an ugly day. Um, The industrials are getting kind of slapped around because Congress went home for the weekend instead of coming up with a deal. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of people were pressed for that. But, you know, if you believe that congressmen are as weak willed as as I do, uh, a deal will be made. And and so this will be an an interesting opportunity to uh, potentially buy, you know, find some 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 uh, names that you can pick off Um, looking at the VIX itself. Uh, you know, I think our, our friend Matt Thompson put out that we've had a massive contango for weeks, you know, for a couple of weeks, the XX is exactly where it was about a month ago. And just goes to show you that contango does not mean free money from the internet 
out of out of VIX, VIX products. The, the futures actually have to fall. So uh, that is uh, something interesting. And, and I'm, I'm really, the VIX is at an inflection point, I believe. I think, uh, you know, it was hanging around 30 for a while. Now it's been hanging around 25. The question is, is 20 next? Or, or are we going to go back to 30? I think you misspoke, Mark. I think the free money from the internet is obviously placing small classified ads all over, you know. The, oh, yes. That's where the money, that's where the free money comes from. One <laughs> tiny little ad in one <laughs> tiny place. And the millions. You'll, ne- you'll never believe what, you'll never believe what, how much Mark Longo's net uh, is worth nowadays. Just from one classified ad about VIX, that's all it took. And that this whole yeah. empire was born there just from that. <laughs> I, you know what? You've just inspired me. I'm going to get a picture of your face and it'll say, You'll never believe how much Mark Longo is worth, and and I'll use that for my uh, to to as a clickbait to get people there to come go. back. To there we go. That that won't don't end in endless controversy for me. <laughs> well done. All right, uh, let's let's move away from that very quickly. Since Brian brought it up, and we're talking about it. It does kind of dominate in the tape this week. We're going to start in a little bit reverse order. We're going to go out to the single names first before we dive into all things VIX and VXX and spikes and all that good stuff. Because single names are driving so much of the tape today. And as we mentioned before, it's earnings explosion, earnings season. If you guys want to crunch the hard numbers for yourselves, well, we got them for you. Free of charge. You can't beat the price. Theoptionsinsider.com. Click on that options, news, and articles tab. You get the earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season report. The earnings move results reports for the big name last night. So hot, we haven't even had a chance to put them up on the website yet. By the time you heard the podcast, they should be. Up there live. Let's break down some of the big names we've been tracking out here this week. Uh, of course, uh, kicked off the week with Hasbro on the toy side, and then uh, S- SAP, not S and P. <laughs> Tuesday we had Pfizer, Mickey D's, uh, Visa, eBay, and Starbucks. Wednesday, Boeing, our friends across the street there, GE, Spotify, GM, Six Flags, and then not good things going on in the in-person theme park segment. I'd imagine a Blue Apron, PayPal, and Qualcomm. Last night, of course. The big dog, UPS, Lily, Comcast, and then Amazon, Apple, and Google. You may have heard of those, as well as Gilead, Grubhub, Facebook. Again, moving to the same day as the other big fang names, a very rare occasion. And WWE even reporting good numbers somehow. Uh, weird times we live in. And then today, of course, Exxon Mobil, Pinterest, Caterpillar, Merck, Chevron, and Under Armour. All right, hot off the presses. We got them for you, listeners. You want the numbers? We got them for you. Let's start with the big dog here Apple, four for one stock split. People can't apparently buy enough iPhones in a pandemic. <laughs> Whoever would have thought here. So coming at the time of this report, the stock was at 384. Actually, I'm sorry, at the closing stock price last night going into these announcement was 384.76. And the market was pricing in 3.8%. Remember, the earnings move results reports are all done by percent, not raw dollar terms. So a little bit different from the earnings move reports. So don't let that throw you in the units there. 3.8%. And they actually delivered as of the time of this report, which was a snapshot from a few minutes ago. Uh, the stock was at 407 and a half. So they had moved about 6%. Let's see where our old friend, good old uh, Apple is ticking right now. Where's my, there we go. All right. Apple 412.07. So give another $5. So Blowing the door is off that 3.8% move. Uh, Facebook, another one. They were at 234.5 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 5.6%. And as of the time of this report, they had moved 7.5%. So a good, a good little bump for them. Let's see where they're hanging out right now. That put them at 252.14. And they're pretty much right still there. So they kind of have locked in around that 252 level, it seems like. Gilead, everyone was watching them to see what's going on with remdesivir and all things corona. Going into their report, they were at 72.33. They were pricing in a 3.5% move, and that's pretty much exactly what they delivered, 3.7%. So they were at 69.63 as of the time of this report, and they are a little bit shy of that, almost a buck, about 80 cents shy of that. So outperforming a little bit to the dark side there on Gilead. Goog L, a.k.a. Alphabet, they were reporting, let's see, they're at 15.38 going into their report. They're pricing in 4.4%. And as of the time of this report, they're at seven, excuse me, 1470, which they moved exactly 4.4%. That's that's an interesting one. We don't see that too often. So they were exactly in line with their straddle. But you know what they say with volatility? It's like the weather. If you don't like it, just wait five minutes and let's see if Google has moved a little bit. They were at 1470.60 as of the time of this report, and now they're 1463. So they dropped another 
seven or so handles. They're off nearly 5% on the day. So they're off a little bit, closing in on 5% uh, for this straddle, but still not a huge blowout from a straddle perspective. Uh, Amazon, another big name everybody was watching out there last night. 30.51.88 going into their report. They were pricing in 5.5%. And as of this report, they had delivered 4.1%. So yet another name kind of underperforming from a net vol, earnings vol perspective, listeners. And let's see, they were at a 31.76, and they've given up about 11 handles of that right now. So they're actually coming back down. So they've underperformed even less. They're in the 3 plus percent range now. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, surprising. You know, we had talked before people pricing in less vol these last couple of cycles. It seems somewhat counterintuitive, yet clearly it was merited last cycle. We saw the numbers. And so far, at least this cycle, it's been merited as well. Let's go out to SIBO. They reported right before the bell. Today, we're going to get to them in a little bit. Things not looking so so rosy on the VIX front. Uh, let's see. They were at 86.89 coming into their report. They were pricing in 3%. And as of this report, they were almost unched. They were off 0.3%. So they were, they were a whole lot of nothing from an earnings volatility perspective. Let's see if they're still there right now. 86.07. So they pretty much have given up about 80 cents. So. Premium sellers out there in SIBO land actually looking pretty good. And let's mix it up with another one. We talked about this one before. It's kind of a silly, fun one. Uh, WWE, they were after the bell yesterday. They went into their earnings 45 43. They were pricing in, get this, 10.4% listeners. And they did move pretty, pretty solidly in the after hours. I think they gapped up somewhere around three bucks. I think, yeah, even today, coming in today, they opened at 48 and a quarter. And yet now, coming into the report time, they were at 45.69, which puts them effectively unched on the day. They've gotten some of that back now. They're back up to, uh, looks like they're back up about 46 and a half. So they've moved a little bit, but nowhere near the 10.4% they were pricing in. So people were obviously expecting some sort of massive corona impact there, and apparently not so much. So kind of an interesting trend. I don't know, Brian, I just laid out a bunch of names out here. A, does any of this surprise you, what we're seeing from an earnings volatility movement perspective? And then B, uh, which of these are the hot ones that you think your folks over there at Ally are going to be, or maybe they currently are trading up in this post-earnings explosion, sir? Well, the I think the most interesting thing here is the Chicago Board Option Exchange. Uh, they've been setting record volume uh, in the, the recent months, but we're seeing that the VIX product is basically drying up as far as volume is concerned. And that's where they really took the hit on their earnings report this week. So I think that's the biggest surprise to me overall is that you would think in this day and age, the VIX options would actually thrive and the volume would thrive in those products. But uh, that's actually why this CBOE is down today, according to a lot of the research reports that I read this morning. Um, to go along with the, the other stocks that we've seen, um, I talked actually yesterday about uh, buying some Qs as an alternative uh, to, on the, I should say, on my, on my uh, options playbook radio show, Inside Options Insider. And I was just talking about how you might want to think about buying some protective puts using the queues because a lot of the underlines that we're going to be announcing, and they're all going to be announcing on the same day, um, are in the QQQs. And there's a little bit less premium, a little bit easier uh, in and out as opposed to trying to tr trade put options on uh, Amazon and these extremely expensive stocks that have fairly wide bid and ass. And it's interesting to see that all the stocks went up and the QQQ is basically flat today. So, uh, and at one point in time, it was actually down uh, with all the all the stocks that announced the earnings that you just mentioned. Uh, the only one that obviously is down out of that that foursome, that big foursome that announced was Google. So um, that's really what I'm seeing. Uh, uh, a lot of people were a little bit nervous going into their earnings as far as our clients were concerned. Uh, I had a lot of questions about how I could protect myself. So on Options Playbook Radio, we talked about doing uh, long puts and buying put spreads in the QQQ as an alternative to trying to buy just individual options in those names. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. I know a lot of your crazies like to hang their hats in the VIXs and the Spikes and the VXXs and the UVXYs of the world. But a week like this, there's a lot of single name vol going on. Any of these big names I just mentioned, any of them lighting up your pitch chat this week with interesting trade ideas, sir? Yeah, you know, we, we spent a lot of time looking at Apple. 
looking at, um, you know, Facebook in particular was was kind of surprised. I don't think anybody was really shocked by Google and Amazon or even SIBO. Um, and yeah, we were kind of playing, looking at the fact that, that QVAL did not look very expensive relative to how much of its earnings were reporting. And, you know, the best play and it was actually to go uh, along a Q straddle and, and not pick an individual company because as a whole, the triple Q itself outperformed its straddle at the beginning of the week, even if many of these companies did not. Let's get out to the broad mothership we're all here to talk about, which is, of course, all things volatility. Spike's futures obviously still halted. Coming into showtime, VIX futures were hovering right around a 25 and a half. That gave us a nice little north of two, about two and a quarter point premium from the AUG future to the cash and the SEP. We saw not quite five points, about 4.9 points uh, for the SEP future to the cash. Mark, one of the things you remarked upon, pun intended, last week, uh, was that amazing chasm, the amazing premium that's being priced in to the forward volatility out there in the VIX futures. Is that still on your radar this week, sir? You know, it's still really wide. Um, it's tightened up a little bit with uh, VIX rallying a little bit and the futures coming down some, but it's still pretty wide given how little time is left in, in to expiration about, uh, about three weeks. So, yeah, vol is, is still pretty pricey. Which is, believe it or not, you know, circling back to SIBO, one of the problems SIBO has. They, nobody, and we've said this, the, it, I think, in the past, nobody is cheerleading a 12 VIX more than the CBOE right now. I guarantee it. They are like, go. Every, every time they see a downtick, the SIBO, uh, the SIBO people cheer. As the VIX go, gets toward 15 or 14, I think that stock is going to be a really interesting buy. Uh, and and one that I'm going to be putting a, a play on to go long once the VIX gets to a low enough level because it'll be a good hedging product again. Well, you mentioned some of the issues going on with uh, SIBO. A lot of that's coming out in the wake of their earnings. Of course, interesting piece coming out from our friend over here in the Chicago arm of Cranes, Lynn Merrick. She wrote a piece called, You Think a Volatility Index would be doing great now, right? Wrong. <laughs> Lynn's had an interesting, shall we say, perspective on the SIBO over the years out there. She talks about how, you know, VIX was the cash cow for SIBO, and that's the case. In fact, she mentions here the VIX brand has eclipsed anything CBOE, and they will readily admit that VIX is the, the single thing that brings all the boys to the yard over there these days in SIBO. And even though people like SPX, it has nowhere near the nomenclature, nowhere near the mindshare, nowhere near the cachet that the FAIR index does out there with the broad public. As she puts here on this article, a series of mishaps have undercut confidence in the brand and revealed SIBO to be overly reliant on the franchise, especially in the face of rising rivals. And she chats with our buddy here, Mr. Shelley Brown. He lists my ex listed as one of the rising rival. Interesting to see Crane Chicago going all the way out to Princeton to talk to a, uh, the Miami exchange. I don't usually do that. Usually I stay here for a CME and SIBO and all the local stuff. Uh, Shelly's saying here, there's not the liquidity that there used to be in, uh, in VIX. So that's one of the headwinds that they have out here. I'll have, to, I'll have to ask him about this when he's back on the show in the coming weeks. But they quote a lot of interesting people here saying, they think that many investors are questioning whether there is something structurally broken with the VIX complex that may limit the growth in the future. And what they're effectively talking about is what we talked about in this show for a while here, listeners. First off, the anemic Futures volume, VIX futures volume has been in the toilet for the better part of this year, which is strange, you know, of course, given the fact that we had such a huge move in the VIX itself. You think would at least in the run up, it would have done all right. And it did fairly well. But in, of course, once it got up to those ex exhaustive levels, as we've said many times here on the show, the hedges played out. The hedges worked. You have to kind of wait for it to reset. As Mark was just saying, he seems hoping for VIX to get back down to a 12. So 50 cent and his ilk can come back in and reset the gun. So far, we haven't really seen that move. It's been stubbornly persistent here in the mid-20s uh, for a while here. Uh, quoting to uh, the article here, second quarter trading, the VIX futures plunged 47% over the same period last year. Another nug we pointed out here many times. VIX options volume also off 33%. This is according to a Goldman report. Uh, they also cite some other interesting things that they kind of blame for this, like, like, the, like the death of Ronin forcing things to liquid. I don't think that really had as much to blame on it. They also cite Credit Suisse getting the heck out of Dodge on the vol front, which will certainly be interesting. Probably why SIBO is helping to usher in this new wave of replacement 
uh, ETPs out there in the vol space because they need those ETPs to churn and burn futures and options out there. They also mentioned, finally, at the end of the article, the kind of the nugget we've pointed out many times during the show, the VIX climb itself has had a negative impact because as it rises, it becomes more expensive to trade. Yeah, that's uh, certainly, and that's where Shelly comes in, citing the liquidity out there. Let's see what's going on and see how much of this article is speaking truth today. And so far, at least, that is indeed the case. Another anemic day and pretty much an anemic week for VIX options. Uh, the ADB is down to 333,000 contracts. That puts it down about 14,000 contracts from last week. And today, as of a few minutes ago, VIX had only put up about 149,000 contracts. So roughly not even half, really, of its ADB out there in a pretty anemic day in fact today so far the big prints are 6677 of the sep 30 calls that's the biggest print we got out there in vix options today so you know when you got a 6000 roughly of something leading the tape in vix it's a pretty quiet day let's see how that translates over into the top hot vix positions out here as well again we talked last week it was pretty much the most anemic we'd ever seen the top 10 oi was around 4.4 or so million out there actually you know 4.75 million so because we're up about roughly a quarter million right a tick over 5 million this week in terms of breaking into the top 10 it's still pretty light only cost you 78,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX land this week that gets you to the AUG 70s number 9 82,000 of the AUG 50s number 9 91,000 of the October 25 puts number 7 94,000 of the September 20 puts Number six, 95,000 of the AUG. 25 puts number five, 101,000. All the way up to number five to break into the 100K club, which is kind of interesting. Kind of shows you where we are out there in ball right now. August 24 puts, 101,000. Number four, 108,000 of the AUG. 40 calls. Numero trace here, 109,000 of the AUG. 60s. And then number two, AUG. 23 puts. And number one, a buck 29 of the AUG. 20 puts. That was 118, by the way. 118,000 of the number two of the AUG 23 puts. So all in all total 5.02 million open, roughly a quarter of a million contracts uh, open out here in VIX options land this week. Mr. Meatball, we kind of just touched on it. Brian just touched on it earlier. Kind of just overwhelming wave of negative sentiment on what's going on out there in SIBO land from a volume perspective on the futures and indeed the options. Obviously today's activity kind of reinforcing that. What are your thoughts on what we saw on the earnings? what this article is kind of laying blame for on the volume front and also what we're seeing out there this week on the options front, sir, a, a trifecta to pick at. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what, what it is, right? Um, it, is, it did its job. It was super active as it was doing its job. And now it needs to reset. The VIX needs to reset so that people can use it. So think about, I like to think about the VIX as kind of like a, um, you know, like a, a rubber band, right? It, it or a uh, a catapult, right? It needs to get slowly. You know, right now the catapult's been fired, the ball has shot. We the the VIX needs to get back down in the teens, so we can load the ball and start pulling the catapult back, 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 and then we can. Uh, and then once once it starts to load. In another seven or eight years, we'll get another big, huge VIX event, and uh, and 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 the, the, we'll see the same cycle. These are opportunities, I think, when the VIX is low volume levels, to you know bide your time and, and find a level where you want to own SIBO stock and or trade options on SIBO, because the VIX is going to recover. There you go. It still is funny to me, even though it's been a public company for a while and there have been options on it. It still is funny to me, the meta nature of trading options on the SIBO. Is that kind of still funny to you, Mark? <laughs> yeah, it is. And what's funny is, is that the liquidity on SIBO options is terrible. And you would think that uh, it is. It's atrocious. SIBO, <laughs> you would think that the SIBO would, at a minimum, push people to provide some liquidity to their own stock. Yeah. But, uh, you know, not not in this case. That always cracked me up. I, I was very early. I, I just just to do it just for the meta nature of it. When the options were first listed, I think I did a 10 lot just for fun. And that's it. I haven't touched it since because obviously they were big parts of our network for a long time. And it seemed weird to be trading options on a sponsor on the network. But just just to say I did it just for the meta nature of trading options on the CBO, I had to do it. But you're right. The liquidity out there has 
kind of been anemic from jump and has never really kicked off out there. Speaking of anemic, this week we said was on the VIX options front, pretty anemic. We already talked about today, pretty weak. The big day of the week was yesterday, Thursday, with a whopping 270,000 contract listeners. So not a single day north of the ADV this past week. Thursday, the big day, the big print, I should say, was the October 25 puts 20,000 of those bad boys. Wednesday, we saw 197,000 contracts on the tape. The big print, AUG 21 puts 17K of those. And the AUG 30 calls, about 14,000 of those. Tuesday, almost the exact same volume, 199,000. The big prints are 22,000 of the October. I should say big prints. The big total volume <laughs> on a contract was the AUG 25 put, the hot contract, 22,000. These all obviously didn't go up in one print. And about 12,000 of the AUG 28 puts. And Monday, Pretty much the same numbers, 201,000 contracts on the tape on Monday as well. The big, the big active contract actually was actually a decent paper. It was 46,000 of the August 60 calls. We talked before about how some of this interesting upside has persisted in August and October. And at least on Monday, that was the case. The rest of the, the, rest of the week, <laughs> the rest of the paper, not so exciting. You know what is exciting, Mr. Meepo? Would you refer to it earlier in the show, the, the cash register, the lottery, the <laughs> The slot machine that pays you money out there, which is VXX. At least that's the way a lot of you like to look at it out there. It's that kind of set it and forget it trade. You buy the long-term puts in your IRA. You go away for a year. You come back and, whoa, tons of money. It's been a little bit more difficult, a little bit more hands-on than that of late. And as Mark mentioned, when the uh, when that front-end erosion ain't occurring, ain't kicking in, it's kind of hard for the big juice to come in on the erosion front. VXX come into showtime. Was that about 29 and three quarters? Puts it down about one and a half points from last show. It's ticked down a little bit since then. It's threatening 29 and a half, which puts it down right about one and right around one and three quarters. So it was down one and a half earlier in the show. Let's see from a volume perspective. Let's see what was on the tape. ADV out there in VXX is not bad, about 191,000. It got well over 200,000 for a while there, but still it hasn't come in as much as VIX options does. Maybe an interesting sign there as well and so far today looks like a pretty robust day 163,000 contracts already on the tape as of a few minutes ago so that means they're probably going to break the adv today adv by the way unched almost literally from last week it was like 190,000 last week it's 191,000 this week so not much change from an adv perspective in terms of big prints actually this is a weird one i can't remember the last time the big print in vxx was 2x the biggest print in VIX options, but that's where we find ourselves today. Remember, it was about 6,000 and change with the big print in VIX. The big print in VXX today, listeners, 12,400 of the July 30 calls, followed by 6,800 of the July 29 calls. So some calls on the tape out there in VXX today. Kind of interesting. Brian, this is one we often joke about here. I mean, Mark just joked about the top of the show, the slot machine cash register. I forgot the analogy he used for it, but something along those lines. It's this trade people love to fade out there in VXX land. How popular is VXX over there at Ally? And what kind of trades are you seeing? Is it the same trade we see almost everybody else do, which is buy the puts and set it and forget it? Or are they up to other stuff out there, Brian? Well, uh- the VXX, I think I get more questions overall on the VXX than I do on VIX options. Uh, the chatter, if you will, from our clients is more so, uh, should we be trading the, the VXX? And if I do trade it, what do I need to look out for? But that's, we're leaning more volume in that underlying than we, you, and back in the day, it used to not be the case. But in this instance, the overall volume at Ally is higher in the VXX relative to the actual VIX index. Um, well, what what are we seeing? Um, I, I don't. I, I think it's the the same approach that you are kind of obviously seeing in the VIX options, and that we we do see people play more on the call side than we do on the put side overall. Um, and even today, I see that the put call ratio is a little bit uh, leaning towards the call side. Almost uh, the put call ratio is down around forty percent. Uh, meaning that uh, almost double the amount of calls have traded relative to the puts. But I've seen more people speculate on the call side on higher volatilities, expecting more volatility than opposed to the put side overall. And that's just from our retail clients. But in general, I see a trend towards the VXX away from the actual VIX options. Interesting. More folks in Ally flocking to the calls, which brings us, Mark, 
to let's call it our inaugural edition of your favorite new game, the Where Is Called. I can't play right now because I because I accidentally looked before the show starts. I know the answer, but let's let's play. We don't have theme music for it. We'll get that in future episodes. But if you want to play, we'll make it a simple version this week. Just guess for us now what place you think the highest. We can do two. We can do two flavors. You can guess either where you think the first call is on the list of the top ten, or alternately what the highest ranked call is on the list in terms of placement. Yeah, I'm going to go highest rank in terms of placement. And Brian, you're welcome to join in the new game. Where's Caldo? Uh, <laughs> and I'm and uh, I'm going to say that it is number number six this week. The number six is the highest ranked call. Interesting. Out Brian, of the top ten. Brian, if you haven't looked at the notes, or maybe if you have, you can just lie. <laughs> so, and if you want to guess as well what the highest ranked in terms of this is the top ten open positions in VXX right now, where do you think the highest ranked call position is on that list, sir? Uh, I, 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 I'll go uh, just under Mr. Rock Lobster, and I'll say number five. Five, so actually it would be higher there. And actually, Mr. Meatball. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Meatball, uh, I know you didn't look at the notes because you never do, so I, I won't accuse you of that, but you got it as a bullseye, sir. Six, oh, nice. Six oh, really? place, so the inaugural yeah. edition. Well, of- I was trying to play the prices right. But that- <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was a smart move by you. It, it really was. <laughs> I, if I didn't nail that one, uh, yeah, and, and everyone knows that I don't look at the notes, so there's no way I was cheating. So, um, but no, that's that. that Go me. Now we need, uh, <laughs> I need like award music when I'm, yeah, we, need, we right need to set up the stakes and week. the rule. Brian, this is still obviously a game that's very much in flux. So you get to play the inaugural, let's say sneak peek to it. Well, in future episodes, we'll have music and we'll have prizes and all sorts of fun stuff. Yes. <laughs> but Mark's been on me for weeks to do a, a guessing game in VXX. You got to play here too, Brian. You got oh, to of Bri- course. And then of course he wins as soon as he, as yes, soon as you play the game. Of course. So, Mr. Meatball, I guess you win my respect for the rest of the episode. I don't know, because it was kind of oh, languishing. Nice. It was kind of languishing. Nice. <laughs> at, at least until the crystal ball. You may lose it again there. We'll see. But for now, yeah. you get that. Let's break down what we're seeing out there. Top hot. Well, actually, before we get to that, Mark, what are your crazies up to in VXX this week? What are they slinging out there, if anything? You know, we were we actually looking at how VXX wasn't moving. Uh, a trade that I set up that I, I still really like was a um, long put spread in SPY versus a put in either VXX or UVXY um, because, you know, my feeling was that we could have a scenario where the market is down and volatility down at the same time. All these companies reporting, not quite happening yet, but I think that we could absolutely see that over the coming week. All right, real quick breakdown since we did the worst call, though, for the hot positions out there in VXX options right now. Number 10, about 15,000 of the August 26 puts number nine, 15,500 of the August 25 puts number eight, our first call. So if you had guest first call, it would be number eight, 16,000 of the Jan 25 calls. Number seven, 16,000 as well, 16,400 to be precise of the Jan 20 puts. Then number six, our second and final call. Also our most hot, hot, easy for me to say, our highest rank call on the top 10 here, 18,000 of the AUG 30 calls. Then number five, 19K of the September 23 puts all puts the rest of the way listeners number four 20k of the Jan 22 puts number three 25k of the Sep 28 puts you know number two and one are listeners that same put spread is still open out there aug 30 22 put spread 105,000 and about 108,000 for number one on the aug 22 puts Uh, Mr. Meatball mentioned UVXY just because our I know our buddy Mr. Lincoln's floating out there listening we'll touch on it really quickly UVXY at about 2590 right now the ADB is about 96,000 contracts so Actually, I'm sorry. The ADB is down now. It's down to about 73,000 contracts. So today, though, it has done decent paper, about 87,000 contracts. So probably going to be ticking up out there from an ADB perspective, but not a heck of a lot on the tape. Coming into today's show, we saw 6,400 was a big print of the July 26 calls. And the top hot position out there in UVXY is 12,000 of the Jan 10 puts. So still... Not a lot to parse out there in UBXY, but there is a lot to parse of your question. So without further ado, let's dive right on into your volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. 
It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome to your segment. It's all your show, but this is your, you guys take the reins on this segment, the vol voicemail. Looks like we got some related questions here about implied vol. Actually, Brian, this first one comes from you and your cadre over there at Ally Invest. Love to see guests coming equipped with their own questions. The first one comes from Zach. He says, hi, Brian, love the book and the show. Well, we like Zach. <laughs> so he's talking about the OPR show and, of course, the Options Playbook radio book. You guys can find at optionsplaybook.com or on Amazon if you want the hardcover or Kindle edition to search for Options Playbook over there. Zach goes on to write, I just had a quick question about calculating the one standard deviation move over the life of a contract. When you reference the implied volatility, it sounds like you're saying it's set for the stock. You say the, quote, stock has an IV of, quote, unquote. But as far as I can tell, implied volatility is different for each option contract. Also, each strike within an expiration date has a different implied volatility. If I want to calculate the one standard deviation two weeks from now, should I just use the at the money strike for the expiration I'm interested in? Will this differ between calls and puts? I'm wondering if there's some data about the implied volatility that I'm missing by using the Robinhood app. I'm planning to make an Ally Invest account. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I don't know why he's asking you about Robinhood. Ally Invest account for this reason. Also, you sometimes use the price of the most at the money straddle to see what kind of move the market is predicting for an event like earnings. Is this equally useful for predicting movement for any expiration? Or is there something about big events that makes this method more applicable? Thank you very much for your time. Any insight you can provide on this is extremely appreciated. And Brian, I'm going to add an addendum here. We have a question from our listener, Ellison, that's kind of a similar, similar vein here. So we'll add, we'll do these two together. Ellison wants to know, he writes in about implied volatility. Well, you wrote it to the right show, Ellison. He or she says, do I understand this correctly? Implied vol is the annual percentage change, positive or negative, you might see in the share price at roughly a 68% probability. Obviously, he's talking about a normalized distribution there. Uh, listeners he says how should i play implied volatility if it's high should i extend my call by so brian it seems like we have a few listeners who are concerned about how you really define and indeed calculate implied volatility so why don't you uh, educate these folks for us brian all right well let's start with zach's question because i i i appreciate the question because i will do this a lot and it's an error on my part where he'll just mention implied volatility for an for an expiration and it is always assumed that it's an at the money strike but it should be explained that if i'm talking about an expiration two weeks out in time then i say the implied volatility for that expiration is x that we are looking at the most at the money implied volatility. And usually what would be done is we'd look at the call at the money on the same strike line, the put at the money, the most at the money, if it's not exactly at the money, and then just do an average of that. And then take that implied volatility to figure out what would be the one standard deviation move for two weeks from now. So a lot of times after talking about volatility for so long, I'll just make that assumption. So I love the fact that Zach called me out on it because uh, overall that, that that it is a mistake that, that I will bring up from time to time. Now, when we look at a lot of these uh, volatility charts, though, you'll see a lot of them where they're trying to calculate a VIX-like implied volatility in that they'll look at a 30-day moving average of a specific stock. And there are some volatility indexes out there now that will track the big stocks like a uh, Amazon and, and Apple and Google. Uh, those underlying stocks actually do have an index that will track that volatility on a 30-day basis. But with that said, if I'm looking for that two-week expiration, I want to look at the put, I want to look at the call, and I want to take an average of the two. Now, also, I think now that we're on the volatility show, I'll, I'll mention that from time to time, if you got stocks where you have a very high uh, short interest in them, sometimes the puts will be skewed to this versus the calls because 
the stock is really hard to short, and that creates some increased volatility on the put side relative. I just want to make that 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 you. I, want, I just want people to be aware that sometimes that will happen, and that will convolute the actual volatility for those types of underlines. Now, with that said, the next question is. Uh, Will you use the at the money straddle on longer term expirations, not around earnings? And and the concept still applies. Most people only talk about that long straddle as the quote unquote expected move around earnings because it's simple. Um, you can get a quote in the in the Wall Street Journal fairly easy by just looking at what is an at, at the money straddle trading for doing the percentage and saying, uh, for example, Apple was expected to move around 5% after earnings. Now, obviously, it's not in regard to direction, but that's when you hear about that at the money straddle uh, being quoted more often than not. And it also helps out now that we have weekly option contracts. So you have fairly short term option contracts that can give you some hint as to the move right after earnings or what is expected from the marketplace. But if I want to go out and look at a uh, five months option contract and I want to look at the atimony straddle, the concept still applies that that would be the expected move for that five month option contract. Now, um, the very last one, and I do appreciate the nice comments as I'm, as I'm looking at it. I really appreciate the nice comments about the show. But the last uh, comment that we have from Ellison, uh, it says, do I understand that, that the annual percentage is a positive negative share roughly 68 percent of how should i play IV? okay now as far as iv is concerned uh overall when i'm buying option contracts the implied volatility is what the marketplace is implying and the best analogy that i can make is that's the line in the sand if you were talking about uh, an over under on a football game or even a line uh, Packers are playing the Bears since Mark is on the show and I'm originally from Wisconsin. So let's say the Packers would obviously be favored against the Bears. That line that is uh, drawn up by Vegas is the line in the sand. It's based off of the monies that are coming in and are setting that line. So if I see high implied volatility, I can make that judgment on it, but that's where the line is at. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's overpriced or underpriced. Now, how might I play it if I think implied volatility is high? Well, I might look at different option strategies because I consider that as a as a over, well, I should just say expensive option contract. But it doesn't necessarily mean just because implied volatility is high that you should be selling or that you should be buying that underlying. And that actually brings up a good point since the pandemic. And I've talked about this a little bit on Options Playbook Radio and with Mark. Uh, we've had discussions. But if you are buyers of premium since the big downturn, they've actually they've probably outperformed more than sellers of premium. And that's just because the marketplace has actually been more volatile than what the marketplace has implied uh, since the news about the pandemic ha has uh, been announced and uh, the economy shut down and everything to go around it. So um, just if you're going to say in general, in recent times, buyers should be outperforming sellers overall. So just an interesting concept because we still got the VIX up above the 20, 20 handle level and uh, the actual volatility of the marketplace overall has been higher than the implied. Mark, obviously our audience has calculating implied vol and all issues of implied vol in the brain. We had the question about the cash VIX term structure last week. So people are having coming to grips in interesting ways with all things implied vol. Anything you want to add to what Brian said here for Zach and Ellison, sir? Yeah, you know, um, find a good analytics platform to calculate your volatilities and they will um, take care of a lot of the individual issues. But, you know, um, you know, the, I, I cannot stress enough the, uh, the hard to borrow situation and dividends and things like that. The way on some platforms that can really throw off implied volatility. Most platforms do have an aggregate implied volatility for the month that, or for that contract strike that is kind of like a mini VIX. Um, almost all of them do for that individual contract. And I do use that a lot because it gives me a good gauge of kind of how expensive or cheap an individual contract is relative to the ones around it. So that, and then I would also add that, yes, the Packers would probably be favored, but our Hall of Fame quarterback uh, never sent a picture of his private parts to a woman. 
<laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> yes, that is the sole delineation between the Packers and the Bears. Great questions. We got more here. Unfortunately, we're running up against it. We got to head on into that most difficult, that most dangerous of segments. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody. Welcome to the crystal ball, the portion of the show where we attempt to wrestle with the slippery pig that is volatility for the week to come. And yet again, Brian, I've been, you know, I've been tilting at this windmill of a little bit more upside involved for the week to come for a few months now and and spoiler alert it hasn't been serving me very well <laughs> out here yet another week i was coming in at 27 and a quarter listeners and mr meatball was about three points shy of me at about 24 24 and let's see as of let's see spikes is 25 67 right now so that puts me oh over a handle away so that's outside our window of victory and fixed cash at about 25 and a quarter actually so that puts mr meatball pretty much it's 25 26 so technically he is uh, 1.02 points away so he's outside i think but i'll be nice i'll give it to him uh yeah another week we're uh downside not a lot of downside just a little bit tended to held sway so mr meatball you already won my respect for the worst Caldo game. And now you have managed to maintain it here during the crystal ball with your ever so slight. If this was a normal year. This is like 2017. That wouldn't really count. So you got to be tight. Point one is our bullseye over here on the show. We demand excellence, but in these crazy times, what the heck we'll go for it. So Mr. Meatball, do you want to go first? Or do you want to pick someone to go first? Well, if, if Brian's guessing, I'll let the guest guest. I'll let the guest guess. Uh, if not, I'm going to go first. Oh, so All right, you, I want to guess. You want to carp him? Right. Is that why you're letting him go first? <laughs> I want to guess. All right, go. I'm going to go high, so I'm going to give you a lot of rooms. I expect a little bit of a downturn overall, so I'm going to go up to about 29% in the implied volatility. And we're Whoa. talking about the picture Ooh. spike. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is high. I like what you, I like what you're putting down here, Brian. I've been I've been leaning that way for a while, and it's, it's all right. It's burned so this me. Week a few it's times. finally going to happen. So yeah, if you coming in, that's that. You're, you're the first guest I think in a while that's gone higher. So, so that's interesting. All right, Mr. Meatball. Then do you want to go next or last? Uh, I'm going to go next, and I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to go twenty four sixty eight, so that it's two four six eight. <laughs> that's Why? Me. Because six was afraid of seven. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> So I, seven, eight, nine. I lo- ah, there we go. By the field, folks. Good stuff. You can tell we all have uh, young children here. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Show. So, Brian, 29%. What'd you say, Mark, again? Give me your number again. Uh, two, four, six, eight. Four, six, eight. Yes. <laughs> that's, the kind of, that's the kind of in-depth analysis you come to Volve use for our listeners. All right. So, we got 29%. Brian on the upside. Mr. Meatball, 24, 68. You know... <laughs> I'm not going to go to Brian's extreme, but you know, we have been seeing this for a while. We have good earnings. That's kind of mitigating it, but we're even turning to the dark side again right now here. Let's see how the major indices are finishing up the show here. Well, NASDAQ has gotten its ghost back again. NASDAQ is up about three quarters of a percent after flirting with unch to the dark side. S and P is literally unched again. And now the Dow is off a third. So I guess, I guess the bull is back. It's got the bit in its teeth again. Oh, here we go again. So, this this prognostication could be off before I even make it, but well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm I like where I was this time last show. I don't usually like to keep myself around the same size. I'm gonna go myself a little bit lower from last show. I'm gonna say twenty six. Let's go twenty six eighty five. All right, listeners, that's our market for this week. Brian taking the upside this week, twenty nine percent. Mister Meatball on the dark side at twenty four sixty eight, and myself nice and Goldilocks in between. At 2685. All right. Unfortunately, that music means you come to the end of another interesting foray through the world of volatility. Talked a whole bunch of earnings. I know you guys like that. You can't get enough of earnings. Well, I'll check out those reports, like I mentioned over there, the optionsinsider.com. Earnings results report should be hitting the site soon. Uh, and if not, we have all the earnings move reports coming into the earnings. You can analyze those as well, as well as the season reports, as well as the reports for the names that haven't reported yet coming up next week. A lot of big names still to come. So check those out over there, theoptionsinsider.com. 
And Mr. Brian, if folks are intrigued over there, they want to kick the tires in Ally Land, maybe trade some VXX, maybe trade some uh, UBXY, maybe they want to sling some Apple or Facebook or Tesla. Uh, where should they go? What should they do, Brian? Well, they can reach out to me at uh, the options guy at invest.ally.com and also follow a lot of our education uh, via Twitter. My handle is Brian Overby and also follow the handle Ally Invest. There you go. And give him, a, give him a follow on the old Twitters as well. He's getting more active over there. It's Brian Overby, O-V-E-R-B-Y. You can find him over there on the old Twitter machine. I'm mean, sure probably look at our tweets from this episode. I'm sure we've tweeted to him a few times during the episode. Give him a follow. He puts out cool stuff in between episodes of his fun program, which if somehow you missed it, I don't know how you did. Maybe you're only subscribed to Volatility Views, in which case, A, go subscribe to the full network. You're missing out on a whole bunch of shows, including Options Playbook Radio, the Option Block, the Advisors, Option, Quifo, all that good stuff, and a whole heck of a lot more. The interviews we do here, you name it. It's all there on the full network, full kit and caboodle, including Brian's show over there, Options Playbook Radio. Mr. Meatball, if folks are intrigued, they want to, they may want to contact you. Clearly, they have questions about implied vol. They want to contact you about that or anything else in the world of volatility. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? You know, I put out a newsletter every day. Go to options.com and uh, get yourself signed up. You get some awesome, uh, some awesome smart content. Awesome smart content over there. Indeed, optionpit.com is the place to go. And on behalf of the greasiest of meatballs, soon, oh, we had some listeners suggest new uh, new food-related names for you when you move to Texas. <laughs> Mark, we'll get to that next week on the show. And on behalf of the Greasy Meatball and Mr. Brian, and of course our friends over there in Myax land, check them out. Myaxoptions.com slash spikes is the place to go for all that good info on all things spikes. And indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for listening live, for sending in questions, all the fun stuff that you do. Keep it coming. And we'll see you back here on Monday. Kick it all off again on the option block all the way through to Friday for more volatility views. Volatility views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading. All for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for information purposes only and are not intended to provide and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.